We're going to calculate the formal charges of each element in ozone by first drawing the Lewis structures. The first thing you do, you identify, with this type of question, you identify the chemical you're given. And we see here there's three oxygen atoms. So the first thing we do is we would draw three oxygens with a separation in between them. Simultaneously, we'll start drawing a formal charge table. So we actually have to solve a problem like this, doing two things at once. Look at the Lewis structure and the formal charge, and you go back and forth in tandem between them. We want to connect every atom once, because we know every atom is connected once. And then we need to start to fill in this table. We need to list our atoms. So I know that I have three oxygens. And I next need to list my number of valence electrons. So remember, valence electrons are the electrons on the outermost subshell of the atom. The number of valence electrons, oxygen is in group 16 of the periodic table, or it's the sixth main group, so it has six valence electrons. And because we have six oxygens, they all uh, are identical, so they all have six valence electrons. I notice that if I add the number of valence electrons, I have 18 electrons total. So I need to now go back to my Lewis structure and I need to pour in all 16 electrons. I've already added four electrons because, and I'll draw it up here out the way, one bond equals two dots. So I'm actually going to use dots now, where a dot equals one valence electron. Oxygen is highly electronegative, so it actually wants to be surrounded by eight electrons. It's also a period two element, and all period two elements seek to have eight valence electrons. So I'm going to fill the valence shell and make sure I haven't added more than 18 electrons total. So if I count them, I have two, four, six atoms or electrons around this oxygen. 7, 8, remember the line represents 2 electrons, so I have 8 total. Plus 2 is 10, plus 2 is 12, plus another line is 14, 16, 18, 20. So I can only have 18 electrons, so I've added 2 too many. Which electrons do I remove? You remove 2 electrons from the central oxygen atom. So now I have 18 electrons total and I've added 18 electrons to the scaffold of the three oxygen atoms. Before I do anything else, I inspect to see if all of the elements are happy. Now, we said that because oxygen is a period two element, it wants eight valence electrons. And we can see that the two terminal oxygens do indeed have eight electrons. Two, four, six, plus two represented by this line. Likewise here. However, look at the central oxygen atom. We have two, four, six. So the central oxygen atom is not happy. And if it's not happy, it will destabilize the other two oxygens. So to stabilize the central oxygen, one or the other peripheral oxygens is now going to share two of its electrons. So it still has access to them, but it's donating them to be shared. Now this oxygen has eight electrons, two, four, six, eight. This oxygen has two, four, six, eight. And this oxygen has two, four, six, eight. So by sharing here, now all three oxygens are happy and stabilized. Now this is a happy structure or a stable Lewis structure. Now I can complete the next line of the formal charge table, which is I count the number of electrons assigned. To do this, you allocate every dot or lone pair 
So these dots are called lone pair electrons. And these lines are known as bonding pair electrons. So when I assign electrons, I allocate all of my lone pair, but only half of my bonding pair. So because there are three oxygens, why don't we label them A, B, and C? And likewise, I'll call this A, B, and C. So we look at oxygen A. We have two, four, and then half of these bonds, five, six. So we have six electrons assigned to oxygen A. Oxygen B, we have one of these two, one of these two. Remember, each line is two electrons, and I can only have half of them. So two electrons here plus those two plus another electron here is two, three, four, five electrons. Three, four, five. Five electrons here. And looking here, we have two electrons, two electrons, two electrons, six, plus an extra one is seven. OK. So we looked at the number of electrons assigned to the atom. Then we combined it in a molecule and then looked how many more electrons are assigned. And notice that they've changed. So being bonded to another element has changed the electron environment of these three oxygens. Now, we notice in this table we have essentially two rows of numbers. So I'm going to label those 1 and 2. And finally, I'm going to calculate the formal charge. So the formal charge is row 1 minus row 2. So for oxygen A, it's 6 minus 6, which is 0. For oxygen B, it's 6 minus 5, which is plus 1. And for oxygen C, it's 6 minus 7, which is negative 1. Now, to verify that my formal charges are correct, if I add the formal charges together, they should give me the charge on the molecule. I know that ozone is a neutral molecule. So this confirms that I have at least correct values for a formal charge. So I have a neutral ozone, and I notice something else about this molecule. I notice that I have different types of oxygen. So who decides which oxygen gets the single bond and who decides which oxygen gets the double bond? Well, there really is no difference because this molecule can also be rewritten like this. So essentially, I'm just going to write it in reverse. And you can see that there's two ways to write the same molecule. So here, this would be A. And I'll call it A prime, B prime, C prime. So A and A prime are different. B and B prime are different. C and C prime are different. How do I go from this Lewis structure to this Lewis structure? I resonate the electrons. So for example, if I take this lone pair and I share this lone pair, it then adds electron density to the central oxygen, which then repels electron density in a concert-like fashion onto oxygen A. Oxygen A now has the third pair of lone electrons. It's now lost its double bond, whereas oxygen C has now acquired a double bond. So essentially, you have this flow of electron density, which restructures the molecule. And whenever you do this, this is called a resonance structure. So whenever you're asked to solve a question where you look at Lewis structure and formal charge, make sure that the sum of all the formal charges equals the, the overall charge on the molecule. And look out for resonance structures.